left. Oh no! Hey, welcome to UFO No, the show where we break down science fiction, what it's all about. Is it aliens? Is it government? What what is it? We're doing some speculation. We're doing some investigation. I'm joined by my friend Casey Skinner. Hey, what's up, guys? Where do UFOs come from? Are they alien? Is it government technology that's floating around that we see? Was Roswell real? Was it a staged event? Did we capture German technology? Did we actually collaborate with them to actually gain some of their propaganda maneuvers and Operation Paperclip? A bunch of German scientists came over. So there's something that a lot of people don't talk about, which is the occult side of it parallel universes that maybe this isn't extraterrestrial maybe it's just an alternate dimension beings that come over that could explain bigfoot and all that so there's this story behind a gentleman named alistair crowley jack parsons l ron hubbard you're familiar with that guy uh you we were talking about a little earlier the uh the uh creator of scientology yeah that guy uh wrote a lot of science fiction Decided he knew the answers, wrote a book about it, and now he's got a following, including Tom Cruise. I hear it's pretty expensive to be Yeah, I've of. heard that as well, so <laughs> I would imagine so. Oh, and uh, also uh, John Travolta. Oh, God. There's this theory that goes back, and L. Ron Hubbard was a part of this. They got their inspiration from Aleister Crowley, and he had some pretty crazy fucking ideas of the occult and what it could do. He was involved in Satanistic rituals in which he would try to open up portals. He had a very interesting life, but we're going to talk about Jack Parsons specifically, but rocket scientist, you know, usually makes you think of smart people. At least in um, that way. Okay, so Jack Parsons is known for helping NASA get a JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, off the ground and making a name for himself as one of the 20th century's most out-there occultists he is not the type of person you'd imagine when thinking about a rocket scientist. He was kind of a weirdo. Like, imagine like an Edgar Allan Poe, but rocket oh. scientist. He read a lot of science fiction growing up, pulp science fiction magazines that uh, came out, got him interested in rockets. His first experiments kind of started in backyard. He eventually got into like gunpowder stuff. He was very, very self-taught. He didn't have anything higher than a high school education, but he had friends along the way that kind of went along with him. He ended up a student at California Institute of Technology, had a small group there devoted to the study of rockets, and they all referred to themselves as the Suicide Squad. Ed Foreman, Frank Molina. Got and start. so they were given their this name because of the dangerous nature of their work. It was more so in the realm of science fiction then. It wasn't actual science at that point in fact there was this other engineer and professor um, robert goddard that proposed in 1920 that a rocket could one day be capable of reaching the moon but he was mocked incredibly so in the new york times and of course eventually after the apollo 11 they retracted that the suicide squad group realized that parsons was a genius at creating rockets creating rocket fuels more specifically and because there was a delicate process, all right, and this delicate process involved mixing all kinds of chemicals, they had to be the right amounts, so that way they'd be explosive, but controllable. And so these versions of the fuel that he created were later used by NASA. And we're talking about a guy who was just kind of self-taught in his backyard. What year he, was this again? This was in the 1930s. Holy shit. Yep. <laughs> He has all these fuels that, that end up getting used by NASA later. So by the 1940s, this guy Molina went to the National Academy of Sciences to get funding for their study in jet propulsion. That was the first of its kind. And all of a sudden, there was rocket science was born. So he's like a founder of rocket science. But Jack Parsons heavily followed the studies of Aleister Crowley, who was very involved in the occult. His ideas were much more rooted in demonology and Satanism than science. But Jack Parsons, because of his science background, believed that these could be done, fulfilled using the occult with science. By 1943, 
the Suicide Squad, who were now known as the Aerojet Engineering Corporation, saw that they were all of a sudden, they were completely legitimate. They were a crucial role in founding NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, uh, JPL, the research center that now sends probes to the farthest reaches of space. That's JPL. But more government involvement led to more success and opportunities for Parsons, more so than the Molina and the, the other guy, Sharpton, I believe. But it also led to more observation into his personal life, and that's where things started to get a little hairy. He's involved in a school of technology. They're funding him. So they start digging into some of his life secrets, and they find some crazy shit. While this is all going on, he's pioneering scientific developments that would eventually lead to getting guys on the moon. I mean, all of his research literally led to landing people on the moon. He was developing the rocket science itself, and then he was attending meetings of the Ordo Templi Orientis, or the OTO, which was led by notorious British occultist Aleister Crowley. Crowley was known as the wickedest man in the world. He encouraged his acolytes, his followers, to follow his one commandment, do what thou wilt. Although there was a lot of other OTO creeds that were also followed, you know, fulfilling all these individual desires, particularly sexual ones. So, like, that was a big thing with Aleister Crowley was sex rituals. For example, communing with the devil, Parsons and the other members of this suicide squad would partake in some of these strange rituals, including eating cakes made of menstrual blood. Ooh, yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Rusty so, coins. <laughs> Gross! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> oh, fuck, man. I had a visual, but now I have a taste. Okay, I didn't need that. This is a full sensory <laughs> experience right now. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> Rusty coins. Parsons' interest in the occult didn't decrease as his career got higher and higher like he was getting far up there in nasa i mean he was you know like i said we're talking about basically the father of rocket science here so as his career is getting progressive he's not slowing down on this occult shit at all he's in fact it's the opposite he's he, doubling down oh yeah man he Going um he it. was appointed as the west coast leader of the oto group in the early 40s so he even used money from his business to buy a mansion in Pasadena, a den of hedonism that allowed him to explore sexual adventures like betting his wife's 17-year-old sister and holding cult-like orgies. Yikes. Frank Molina's wife said that women were walking around in togas, weird makeup, dressed up like animals. A big, huge costume party is what she quoted. So Melina just kind of shrugged this off as his partner being eccentric. Just kept telling his wife, don't worry about it, Jackson, all kinds of shit, you know, no big deal. But the U.S. government was not so happy about all this. So they... You can imagine. Yeah. So the FBI started to do surveillance on Parsons more closely and <laughs> was starting to find the quirks and behaviors that he had that were going on. They considered it national security. It was that crazy. In 1943, they bought out his shares of the aerojet industry and essentially expelled him from rocket science. In NASA, the father of rocket science was banished out of science. We got what we need. All right, guy, yeah. time to move on. Yeah. Kick the bucket. So out of work and all this, he ends up burying himself even deeper into the occult shit. Then he kind of took a bad turn and met up with a former scientist that became a science fiction writer known as the Scientology founder, L. Ron Hubbard. Uh -huh. So Hubbard encouraged him to attempt to summon an actual goddess to Earth in an outlandish ritual that involved chanting, drawing occult symbols in the air with swords, dripping animal blood on runes, and masturbating in order to impregnate magical tablets. Tablets. Like stone tablets. So it was fucking, a metaphor. They were fucking rocks. <laughs> they have to impregnate the rocks yeah. with your semen. Yep. If your semen doesn't soak into the rock, you're not doing it right. 
Oh, I guess. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. All kinds of crazy shit rocks like this. I actually accept semen. It's crazy. <laughs> So I've never tried though. They went so far to even have Crowley dismiss Parsons as an idiot. You know, even his own group was, you know, the leader of his group. Saying that he was crazy. Saying he was crazy, basically. You were saying though, like you were talking about how he's he's a scientist in that regard, so he he believes in science, but he, he also believes, believes this. Yeah, cult, uh, the devil stuff. So he has some sort of a connection between the two. I mean, obviously, L. Ron Hubbard pushed him more into the occult side of it because now he was not involved in rocket science anymore. He didn't have the funding to continue on with the rocket stuff. So he went that that's why. Yeah, he went deeper into the occult side of it than the science side of it. But in the beginning, when they first started it, you know, it was this idea that through science and the occult, you could fulfill these rituals. Hubbard ends up stealing Parsons' girlfriend, Sarah Northrup, who he eventually married, and all of his money, or at least a majority of it. And then there was the Red Scare in the 40s during you know the height of communism and all that stuff. This was right after the war. We're talking about the beginning of the Cold War. Red Scare was the scare of the Russians. In the late 40s, Parsons came under scrutiny again from the government due to his involvement with this sexual perversion and this OTO group and the fact that he was seeking out work with foreign governments because the U.S. government shut him down. He was talking very loud about the FBI following him. And I'm telling you all this as a backstory to Parsons to explain how he got his science background and then I'm going to tie it into aliens because I know that's the big question. Well, how does this tie so in aliens? We got so far, he's yeah. a rocket science, father yeah. of rocket science. Exactly. A genius. And then he's an occult leader or at least high up in the high up, High up in science so career. Crazy. High you up don't... in NASA. High yeah, up in this yeah. weird occult group. Literally ruins his career following L. Ron Hubbard thinking that that was the way to go. And then gets ostracized by this group. Absolutely no way he's going to be able to work with NASA again. No way he's going to be able to get back into science. So he wounds up using his explosives expertise to work on special effects in the film industry. Even though he's an expert in this, he continued to do these backyard experiments that were really, really dangerous. As he got older, of course, they just got more and more dangerous. But that's what eventually did him in. In 1952, he was working on explosives for some kind of a film project at his home and there was an unplanned detonation that destroyed the lab and killed him. He was only 37, but he was found with broken bones, a missing forearm, and half of his face was nearly ripped off. The authorities ruled the death an accident, theorizing that Parsons had simply slipped up with his chemicals and things got out of hand. However, that hasn't stopped a lot of Parsons, people that he knew, theorists, suggesting that he never made a mistake and that the actual, actually, that the government just wanted to get rid of him, and so they killed him. That's one of the theories, is that they offed him because he was doing all this shit. But there's a lot of theories that, in fact, in his diary, he claims that he ended up being successful in one of these attempts to bring this goddess forth, to opening a portal. So that's where the successful. story of Jack Parsons ends. So he brought, so, so, so far we're ending with, there's a goddess somewhere. Yeah. Well, oh, no, it gets much worse. So, <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Based on Aleister Crowley's theories of the occult, opening up a portal, If you, whoever opens the portal is the same one who has to close it. The theory is one of the theories. There's a lot of theories. There's a theory that the government killed him. There's a theory that he never died. There's a theory. There's all kinds of theories. But this is what if this whole occult thing and you believe that he fulfilled this based on what he claims that he was successful in opening this portal and then died shortly after and the fact that the originator of the of the spell the ritual whatever it is whoever opens it has to close it this portal has remained open because parsons died shortly after if it did open up a portal into the occult there's this alternate theory that aliens are not extraterrestrial of this universe, that they're a parallel universe that was opened up through this portal. And that's where we get all these, you know, if you look at a timeline of a cult, now there's always been a cult. 
you look back at, I mean, look at Ancient Aliens, though that entire fucking show, in yeah. theory, okay, is from the idea of artifacts, drawings, beliefs in ancient cultures that believed that there were star men or creatures that came down and were frequenting Earth. Aside from that, when you look at actual crafts and occult things and paranormal things, there's a timeline from roughly 1936 when a supposed UFO craft crashed in Germany and was recovered by the SS and therefore propelled. And then shortly after that, you have spotting of the Foo Fighters in World War II fighter planes when they were spotting what seemed to be unidentified flying objects that were illuminated flying around what at the time they didn't even have jet propulsion. This whole timeline fits in this timeline of this occult happenings. I mean, there is a lot of reason to believe that the government is using technology to fool the American public into believing or at least continuing to believe that there is an alien presence. It's almost like the Jetsons. Yeah. Meets the Flintstones at the same exact time. Right? <sighs> exactly. You know, but whatever. if you look at the timeline, you know, the 1900s, 1918, 1919, when you look at Crowley's, the height of his group, there was also the height of German societies that claimed to be in contact with extraterrestrials mm -hmm. that also funded Hitler at the exact same fucking time. Two different areas. So you've got European guy Aleister Crowley that's attempting to open up a paranormal occult portal that's interested in satanic rituals. And then you have the Vril uh, societies in Germany that believed in extraterrestrial communication funded the Nazi regime all at the same time this is happening. Fathered the rocket science. Right. And then the father of rocket science, Jack to, Parsons, yeah. believes in Aleister Crowley. Yeah. So it all interjects, and then the timeline, 1936, 1942, 1940, these are all major dates in which things in the paranormal were happening and things in extraterrestrial were happening at the exact same time in different places. Like it's I interesting, said, too, to think of the multi-portals uh, aspect or the, you know, the multi-universe yeah. aspect because it's an entirely possible thing. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the basis of like Rick and Morty and stuff, it's... It's outlandish and everything, but that's the thing. That's it. It literally could be something like that, as far as you know, uh, astrophysics would say. Yeah. You know, it's just it's a crazy ass. It's a crazy idea. At the same time, it's not because it's completely as it's just as possible as the uh, aliens in general, or being the only person, the only uh, beings in the universe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're all crazy. It's all ideas. possible, all feasible, all plausible. If you believe in one theory, you know, it's all conspiracy theory until it's fact. If you look at everything from MK Ultra to Operation Paperclip to Operation High Jump, all these things were conspiracy theories until they were declassified. And then all of a sudden it becomes fact. The earth was flat until, it, until there was a theory that was considered blasphemous. Science fiction becomes science. Absolutely. More often than you would think. <laughs> Modern day science is a religion. They refuse to let this religion go. These current theories, these current science facts that's, go that's a really good way in light it. of new findings, new science. There's a guy, Paul LaViolette, we've mentioned on the show before, who has an entire theory of subquantum kinetics, which is he's saying is the new physics. I think people get addicted to statistics and this is a really good saying. Um, it's been said. I honestly don't know who said it first, but it's statistics don't lie and liars use statistics. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, you can look at statistics all day. And I think that's where this uh, community and the, this world's <laughs> kind of got really obsessed with hearing statistics. But the thing is, is we've mastered uh, the art of taking whatever we want and making it a statistic yeah. in a way. So like it, it, we all are going to take our biases through it. So that's the problem with always using statistics and largely science is based off statistics right now. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to have to leave a lot of our ideas behind once there's certain thing we get certain things that we never thought were possible because just look 20 years ago, you know what yeah. I mean? Like just look at these things. We're going to have to leave stuff farther behind because it's only going to get faster and faster and faster. So like the uh anti-gravity 
Uh, yep. that eventually we'll have that speed. You know? Oh, yeah. We'll have that for everything. Electromagnetic we'll propulsion right now, you could argue that that is today's anti-gravity. That next, I mean, look at this. You have trains that through electromagnetic propulsion, it cuts down the amount of Gs that you feel, and it never touches the ground. It literally Zero hovers friction. there and is smooth as a motherfucker. I mean, that couldn't that that couldn't have even been possible. I mean, now you look at technology now. I mean, I look, I'm a child of the eighties. I remember Quantum Leap. That motherfucker had a smartphone. Okay? You remember that guy? What was that guy's name? I can't even remember that guy. He was in a weird suit. Does anybody remember Quantum Leap? That that I was too young. That show that. there was a dude. He would time jump to an area where called a quantum leap. He would jump to an area in which he would be in someone else's reality. He would embody that person and he would have to fulfill a goal of some kind to help that person out. And then when he was done, his little guy, his dude would show up in his shiny suit. I mean, he was a human, but he wore like a cool shiny like zoot suit. But he had what looked like Lego blocks all put together. And it lit up and everything. And he would sit there and bloop, 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 bloop. And then he, oh, Sam, you're going to have to jump to 1921 and be a be a ballroom dancer in a speakeasy, you know. And then and then the guy, Sam, would be like, oh, no. And, you know, I just helped this guy. And then pfft, all of a sudden he's in the wormhole and he's going to the next one. That's how the show would end every single week. That's how it end. And that guy had a smartphone. That now we look at. I mean, look at the tel- telecommunic the communicators from Star Trek. Yeah, very true. It's fucking smartphone. Yeah, art used to imitate life, but now life imitates art. In my opinion, I believe that you have much more people thinking to conclusion. They're taking certain facts. Okay, like for instance, well, shit. If we have a train that goes three hundred miles an hour based on electromagnetic propulsion, then why couldn't we do this? And if we can do that, then how come we couldn't do this? And if we did this, then that would lead to this. So you have a lot of people doing that. I mean, that's kind of what conspiracy theories are. Connecting dots that either aren't there or that are hinted at being there well, think of like- or are there but not connected, but then you connect them and you can do that. The same thing with technology and you can say, well, this directly leads to this. And same thing with, with art. Science fiction, Star Wars, Star Trek, Quantum Leap. We're doing it now. It starts with a question. I think for, yeah. for the most part, it also just starts with a question like, I wonder if we could, uh, you know, change the weather, control the weather in some way. They did that. You know what uh, I mean? Like, it, it's crazy that like, you can just ask a question. I wonder if we can do X. Our, it's kind of crazy in this aspect. And uh, I know there's some sort of theory out there that aliens did uh, experiments on us to, to, to the brain. The brain. Oh, sure. Fixed, you know. They could be either talking to us telepathically or they could have made it so that we can actually come up with those creative solutions and that we're gay. Just consistently, that's all we were, um, you know, genetically uh, inclined to do at that point. Like as a whole, like there's always going to be a certain percentage that maybe does a certain amount, but the potential is always super high, especially once you get a go. Like, you you know, the idea that there's an idea kind of sitting around and that at the same time, there's someone else in another spot thinking of the same idea. And eventually that idea is going to pop out and it's kind of just sitting in this uh, almost like an internet, I think. Like it's it's just like a... a Connectivity. It's, yeah, there's something connected between all of us, this energy in a sense, that we can pick through that uh, energy and that information in a sense. We can download that information and some people get in that same frequency. They can download that information and be like, what about this idea? Yeah. It's not really our idea. It's just an idea that was already in the frequency. That's already out there. That we just kind of had to happen to pluck out. A thought that's in the ether that we connect to in some way through frequency that we then pull down. Yes. And then, uh, so, you know, through some science right now we have we have the artists showing what the uh, science could bring and at one point it was the scientists showing what the artists you know what i mean like we're bringing so there's just this ebb and flow between art and science that make it so like okay so how do we get to this point how are we gonna like star wars you mentioned star wars how are we gonna make it so we have a plane that actually can or some sort of a ship that could have this or how are we gonna have this life i mean that's what elon's working for right now right that scares the shit out of me There are sources that say that he is aiming to have 62,000 satellites orbiting Earth for supposedly faster free Internet. I call bullshit only because of the fact that 
for faster free internet you need 62,000 fucking satellites orbiting earth are you kidding me it sounds like the plot to a video game where you got to take over the antagonist dude for real he's the antagonist so there's this there's this concept and i don't know if you're familiar with it project bluebeam in which they are going to encompass the earth in satellites or some type of holographic technology in which to project a hologram around the earth to accomplish one of two things, fulfill religious prophecy as a whole, each culture, each religion, fulfill it. So that way everyone is directed towards a one world religion or simulate an alien invasion and divert all defense budget funds to space. And that's how they're going to do it. In fact, Warner Von Braun specifically mentioned communism, terrorism, global virus, and alien invasion. This was in 1973. Use as false flags to divert funds from national defense to something, to technology, specifically technology, that they would be moving off planet. And Warner Von Braun was one of the 1,200 scientists brought over Explain during Operation Paperclip. Too, that, the, what happened on the Building 6, too. You know, the, the money that just disappeared. You oh, know, that, yeah. That could be a whole... There's a lot gone. of... I believe that all conspiracies are connected. A lot of these are not theories or conspiracy anymore they're facts so let's just call them what they are the the operations that went down back then were an attempt to reel in technology that that we wanted as a nation or as a world that we had to get our hands on that now all fear all conspiracies that have happened after that such as mk ultra have been in an attempt to further on this alien agenda so for instance MK Ultra is all about psychological manipulation, okay? There's a ton of actual documents out there pointing to incredibly invasive mind techniques that they used to implant memories, remove memories. I mean, there was all kinds of side effects that you could argue coincide with every single recollection of an alien abduction. This is what I mean. They can do experiments to make you think you saw things that you didn't make you feel that you felt things that you didn't that you would continue that memory that you'd believe it absolutely wholeheartedly even to the point where seeded memories that are only pulled out during hypnotic regression these are all things that are done with alien abduction cases they found small implant metal that literally do nothing they're just small little, they don't connect to anything. They don't have any form of, in fact, there's a doctor that works on these specifically that, that works with abduction cases in which they find metal objects. He removes them surgically and he keeps them and he studies them. And in all of these cases, they were an organic metallic hybrid. So it was a foreign object, but the body didn't reject it which means it had some form of organic property to it in order for the, the body to acknowledge it and, and literally grow with it. Like, they had to cut these things out of nerves and shit. It, How long did they actually, were they there for? Was it just like a... Sometimes it was afterwards? years. Sometimes it was months. Sometimes it was weeks, um, right. depending on the case. So, obviously, as this doctor gained renown for doing this, there were more and more recent cases that would go to him first. But there was a lot of old cases that wants finding him came to him and said, I've had this thing in me for years, decades sometimes. And they would remove them and find that, yes, they were metal. Yes, they were materials you could find on earth, but somehow it bound with the body that most, most foreign objects would be rejected by the body. If they're not producing a radio signal, if they're not receiving a radio signal, if they're not putting out electricity of some kind, they're just a prop. If you look at a crime, if you look at a criminal that's trying to put a detective off of the case, they're not just going to disappear. They're not just going to stop doing what they're doing. They want to continue doing what they're doing, but they're going to try and lead the detectives off the case. So what are they going to do? They're going to plant false clues. That's government MO 100%. Yeah. We're going to lead them off the scent. We're going to give them this when really we're doing this. So if you take the alien phenomenon as a whole, instead of the individual details of an alien abduction. Now, you're aware of this. Our memories are based on 
not necessarily what really happened. Our memories are sometimes formed of our perception of what we believe happened. Yes. Now imagine having a memory implanted that your body, it's foreign now. Okay, now let's look at the, the material. Same thing. It's a foreign object, but at the same time, it's made to be absorbed by your body. So what it's, what's it going to do? It's a foreign object that now your body is binding to. Your brain now is binding to this memory. So organically, it's going to fit it into your environment. They don't even have to make it specific to you. They could have a program. Alien abduction, you were this, they experimented on you, they did this, they did this. Your brain would create the rest of the details. I was floated out of my room, there was a light. All these things can be done with drugs, done with staging events. Honestly, just with questions. If you ask someone to, the the reason why you'd ask someone to imagine something is because it it is a, a subconscious command to say, like, you have to see this picture or video, or whatever it is. So no matter what, it's going to be a conscious command when you say, imagine if you were sitting down and playing poker with your buddies, smoking a cigar. You're going to think of all that stuff as it happens. You don't have a choice. Just be just yep. like if I say, don't think of a pink elephant. Exactly. Just thinking of a pink elephant. That's just how our brains work. Yep. So honestly, I could see how uh, uh, they got into MK Ultra in a lot of ways. Yeah. And you could do, like you said, just adding the what would make it so they're so influenced we could actually, instead of influence, it actually turns into manipulation because we exactly. can make them think whatever we want to Absolutely. for our own benefit and none of their benefit. So there's a couple of examples of why I believe the majority of what we believe is alien abductions is simple government manipulation, memory regression, memory implantation, is that you have the MK Ultra experiments that went on for decades. Decades. We're talking from the 60s, 70s, and there's, there's documents showing that they went on till the 90s. You have far less abduction cases now than you did in between the time of Roswell, Betty and uh, Barney Hill, or no, what was it? Betty and Barney Hill in 1956 or whatever it was. That was a huge case. They remembered all of it through memory regression, hypnotic regression. That could have been an easily implanted. They, were, they claimed to be in their car driving. They saw a big flash of light. They stopped. They got out of their car. This whole thing, there have been memories just like dreams. Been dreams. You wake up sweating. You're like, oh my God, that was so real. But have you ever have you ever seen a stage hypnotist like uh, online or anything like that? I've seen staged, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you watch like a stage hypnotist, and, uh, and there, there's a lot of good ones, it almost looks like they get they get enough people up there. And there's a certain amount of people that... Uh, don't want to really necessarily listen. And I mean, if, you, if you're trying, if, you, if you're new to hypnotism, um, you you will get hypnotized as long as you follow the commands. You know what I mean? That's just how it works. So like, as long as you're listening and actually doing the whole thing. So those guys can actually make, and it, like you were talking about, they can you can implant uh, memory yeah. by any means. You can make someone think that their name isn't their name yeah. until you they unanchor that. Whatever it is, they decide to unanchor. You can do it. You can make them think, they're looking at you. You can make them think, that you are their favorite celebrity or something like that. You can make them think that. You can make them think that they're a, you're a dead a celebrity that was dead. Yeah. You're like, you're supposed to be dead. They'll actually, because you can trick your brain, you can actually send commands to that subconscious when you get to a certain state that actually makes it so they, they actually think that. And the only way in a lot of cases is is to have some sort of a, a, a collapsing of an anchor. They have some sort of anchor that'll make it so they see it and there's, you're going to have to collapse that anchor so they don't see it anymore. And sometimes it'll be like a snap. It could be anything. It just depends on what that, whoever put that actually installed the memory in there. Yeah. They can actually, you can install a completely fabricated memory. And just, just getting a person in the right state on a consistent basis. There is a story called the Manchurian Candidate. Have you ever heard of that? No. Basically, government techniques of sleeper cells, which was people that were trained assassins that had a target that they were to assassinate that they did not know any of this like salt kind of kind of yeah yeah but this was where they were actual military personnel that were trained in certain ways certain things but they were implanted with a mission an objective that only came out years later okay years later yeah implanting an idea that only manifests itself when queued up 
when only manifests itself when when uh, object when uh, you know ordered to or instructed to or whatever. There's all these studies. There's all these documents showing that these these experiments were going on using LSD and all kinds of drugs and like I said, hypnotic therapy and all this stuff. People believe they were abducted. They see it. They know it. They believe it. But I truly believe that it's once again along with the alien mythos. It is part of what is perpetuated to keep you off the trail of what's really going on, which is the diversion of technology. That technology is the number one ruler here, the number one priority here. And they are in an absolute mass exodus off planet of all technology. Why do you have billions of dollars going out in black budget projects when there's really not that big of an advancement in military technology going on domestically? If they're putting that much money into off-world shit, it takes a lot of money. Supported space takes a lot of money. Trump just announced he wants to start mining the moon. Natural resources. Now, if the government acknowledges that they want to do something or they're going to do something, they've already been doing it. You can pretty much bank on that. If they say they want to start mining the moon... Buddy, I bet you they've been doing that shit for years. And if that's the case, if you look at lunar activity, you start changing the weight, the dimension, the shape of the moon, as in taking out big chunks of it or taking out cores of it, you change the lunar activity and how that affects weather on the earth. Yeah. It's crazy that they would be doing that. And now you look at some of the crazy fucking weather that we have climate change, all these things that are happening, you could argue that that is a direct result of them fucking with the moon. Could be, yeah. You know, my other theory is that why do we only see what that one little rover shows us on Mars when we have probes on Saturn? Because they're already fucking there. And they can't show us the all of Mars. And they can't show us the backside of the moon because they're fucking there. They're already there. They only, we only see what they want us to see. They can literally show us pictures of the entirety of Saturn, the entirety of Jupiter. But we see screenshots of Mars, screenshots of the moon. Yeah, that's true. I never thought of that. Dude, it's fucking... In 1994, there was a military official that came forward saying, look, I've seen bases on the moon. We had... We have absolutely had the technology to not only see clearly on the moon and a lot of other planets, but in 1994, he confirmed that from a satellite in space, they could read a license plate number on any fucking street. But you're telling me that I can't, that we can't get a clear shot of the moon, clear shot of Mars they are already there. We are in a disclosure event. And I, I repeat this every fucking episode, but we are in the middle of a disclosure event. We have gotten more. The Pentagon released a, a videos of a UFO being tracked by jet um, aircraft. Absolute top of the line military aircraft that could not keep Recently? up with this thing. Yes. Within the last three months. Oh, no shit. No shit, dude. They released it. They literally had this thing you could see, the shape of and everything. They even confirmed. They they completely recategorized UFO. They now call it UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. But that is exactly what they said, is the, here we have, there was one expert that even said, I believe this is 100% alien. We're talking about the government acknowledging Alien, alien ships, alien existence, and it's super on the down low. But that's because, once again, what do you have going on in the world right now that's bigger than aliens? Everything else, the demise of democracy, the demise of what seems like you and America as it is. Why would anybody give a fuck about aliens right now? Now's the perfect time to release the information. Very true. So, dude, I mean, you you have the the disclosure event happening right now where they are literally a mass amount of, of documents declassified. Um, Dr. Stephen Greer is on a, on calls it a disclosure event. He where calls would, it the disclosure where project. Where would we go to find these things so we could actually see? Oh man, you look up Dr. Stephen Greer has got a ton of it. You can look up the black vault. 
which is all kinds of conspiracy documents put together. You can look up the UAP videos released by the Pentagon. There was even a video recently that showed ships rising. I mean, just zoomed into one of the craters on the moon. Three craft rise up. One, two, then three, and move along the surface, just above the surface. Dude, the shadowing is what blew my mind. The shadowing moved with the texture of the moon. That's hard to do with the best technology. Shadowing is some of the hardest work to do as a graphic designer. This was just a, an amateur astronomer who zoomed way the fuck into the moon. And I don't know if he'd been watching it for a while. He had to have known when it was going to happen. But three, just bink, 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 and just move right along. And then move right over to the dark side of the moon. It's crazy, man. And so I got to see these videos. It's crazy. it's crazy. I mean, but once again, if you look at everything as an individual, you know, just like a crime, a detective would say. These murders are connected in some way. The evidence is slight, but there's something there. The same thing is happening here. If you look at this as a crime scene, an individual has committed lies that is trying to cover up their tracks, but continue doing their actions. This is, this is criminal 101. They are continuing on with what they're doing. They're diverting to something else. And all these things are connected. All these projects are connected to one gigantic solution, which is to move the elite off world and leave the rest of us here. I mean, what are they doing? They, the, there's virtually no one in authoritative positions that is trying to save the world, trying to change environmental impact. It's here. It's there. It's whatever. But as a whole, no one's trying to do that. But guess what is happening as a whole? Technology. Every fucking government, every fucking nation has been, since the space race, has been racing each other for the next technology. Who's got the atom bomb? Who's got the V2 rocket? Who's going into space? Who's got weapons? Who's got this? Who's got this? Now you got nuclear power. Anybody could have nuclear power now. Everybody's got nuclear power. So, so what can you do with nuclear power? Fucking anything. Anything. You can go to space. You could be in space. If you have the power and the, te and the capability to do things like MK Ultra against your own people, then you absolutely would continue to do this. So, so, so what you're proposing is that the, the government is uh, allocating funds for technology to get off world get the elite specifically by elite you mean like the financial elite the elite as far as like the essential workers elite no like the space force or, i mean like like let's say the space force mm -hmm. would be something going up there they're, they're assuming that they're going to need some sort of a military so that would be their their military or something like that would that be uh, something as part of the there is there person? are numerous military officials and personnel that have come forward saying that they have been going to mars for 20 years there's uh richard something i can't remember what his name is it might not be richard claims to have been recruited when he was 17 years old got in the military was recruited to start doing missions to mars and did that for 20 years and then no shit he claims he was put back into a 17 year old body after all that he can walk he can walk you through his entire 20 year career perfectly he names off there was a there was another guy a gram something that that uh, hacked into nasa's files and pulled up what appeared to be ranking system of a space force and this was back in the 90s i could see that there is a lot of evidence there is a lot of signs and and anecdotal evidence and testimonials by not just random Dick and Harry's, but by some pretty credentialed motherfuckers that are coming forward saying, dude, we've been in space. We have all this technology. They're way ahead of us. Ben, what was his name? Ben Rice. I can't remember what his name is. Ben something was the CEO of Lockhart and Lockhart Martin, which was one of the biggest military contractors, period. They were, in fact, they had the B-2 bomber. He came forward saying shortly before his death, if it was in Star Trek or Star Wars, we've either been there and done that or decided it wasn't worth our time. No shit. 
We're talking about the CEO of one of the biggest government contractors. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars in government contracts to simply make technology. They already have the technology. They, they have it. They've utilized it. It's not a matter of if they're going to be on the moon. It's a matter of when we find out. I'm telling you right now, how is anybody going to know the difference between a mining ship? Because that's what they're claiming they're going to do is mine the moon. How is anybody going to know the difference between a mining ship and a warship? Having We're never seen a spaceship from from the moon specifically. Well, mineable resources that we could use on Earth. The, fu- the moon is full. Of, oh man, that's beyond my knowledge of geology, I guess. But there's a lot of things. There's a lot of. I mean, if you look at the last time we were on the moon, ni- or not, last time we went, 1979, they claimed that because of the razor sharp rocks on the moon, we couldn't go back. Now all of a sudden, we're going to mine it. I'm sure they were lying. About of course, the they were lying. Yeah. You know, it's because we've already been there. We we stayed there. Yeah. You know, why would you go there and decide not to go back? And why would you continue to launch satellites and continue to launch probes if you don't even intend to go to the moon again? I don't listen to your words. I look at your actions. We have continued to push our probes, continue to push our ships as fast and as far as they can go to see what else is out there. They're there. There's a reason why they won't show us orbital views of Mars There's a reason why they won't show us orbital views of the moon, but yet they'll show us the whole planet of Saturn. What is the the satellite or whatever, the the probe that they sent out a while ago? Oh. The one that's farthest away, but for some reason, I don't know if it's stopped. Is it the Hubble? That's Uh, still like, but it's uh, at least not. I believe it it just recently finished its mission, um, if I'm not mistaken. Was it the. I want to say it was the Hubble Hubble telescope because it was it was one of the no because that that's just a telescope specifically I uh, thought maybe. it was yeah like the, I'd have to look it up <laughs> there was one that was sent out on this journey and it to, finished its mission it finished, and it just yeah. like kept on going back to like yeah. oh, well, let's just yeah let's see what this why goes. wouldn't you why I wouldn't mean, you it's gonna send it but why not yeah there was actually a, a moment in time where they lost connection with that telescope specifically that you're mentioning and. They had to do all kinds of stuff because there's really no way. I mean, you, you can't, like, send somebody out to it. No. And so they were just panicking and frantically trying to get this thing going again um, from within NASA, and they finally got it going again. But there's all kinds of things that point to there's something bigger going on. I call it the alien final solution, whether it's a one-world power that is going to do this holographic projection or it's going to be an actual alien invasion, you can feel there is something coming. You can feel there's something looming. There's truth out there that you can feel is coming. They're, they're releasing a lot of information, and I believe it is with the intent to get us caught up to speed to the point where we won't freak out over the knowledge that we are already on the moon. Yeah, people are going to look, you know, the people that are looking at it or anyone that talks about there's aliens or something like that that still yeah. look at you with that, eh, you know. Um, those people are going to be like, duh, <laughs> duh, you idiot. Yep. You know, yep. they're going to be the same oh, people. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So now you have the history of Jack Parsons, the history of JPL, which is one of the biggest reasons why NASA is where it is and why we got people on the moon. And, and who knows, you know, if, if Jack Parsons was a fall guy, that they got him out because he was being too loud about it. That maybe it was really that they were all doing this, even NASA was doing this, and they just didn't want him having wild sex orgies at his home because it's like the Da Vinci Code, man, dude, the movie. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? That's what yeah. they reminded me of when you were talking. About. I was like, this sounds like right? the plot of the Da Vinci. Crazy Code. <laughs> man, it's crazy shit. I mean, it really is. But the idea is to keep an eye on you. I say we say this at the end of every episode. Don't trust the government they are absolutely lying to us whether it's on domestically with politics whether it's globally with economics whether it's universally with space and what's out there and where we are i wholeheartedly believe that they have manipulated the situation to gain technology and money in which to put themselves militarize the moon and mars and that it's only a matter of time before we find out that it's true. I mean, look, they're taking recruits for a space force and you don't need any experience. 
how do you not need experience to be in space when astronauts go through decades of training unless you've already been there and you have a way to train people in space quickly and efficiently? Huh? No experience required to be an astronaut, folks. So kids, get bees and fucking join Space Force. Go. Be mediocre. Join Space Force. Let's start mining the moon and asteroids and let's let's put a bunch of people out there in space. They're just like, fuck yeah, America. You know, I mean, God, I can't imagine a better thing than uh, a bunch of hillbillies on the moon. You know, that's going to be fun. Keep an eye out for the nefarious aliens out there. You know, if you have some occult rituals that uh, that we don't know about or or you want to talk about, let us know. I'd love to hear about that shit. You know, let's open up some portals. Let's meet some aliens. Huh? Huh? You know, you could always try the, uh, oh, what's it called? The Ouija board? I have one. There you go, man. I'll just spell aliens. You know, I, I don't think I ever told you this, but one day, John, uh, I don't think it was like, we were like early 20s, and I had my first apartment, and he, uh, I went home after work, and I was like a pizza delivery dude, and, you know, just got my tips, counting them as I walk in the door. The lights are off. Uh, but there's candle lights going around, <laughs> and on the ground in the middle of the the living room, he has a taped pentagram. Fuck yeah! With the fucking Ouija board in the middle of it. Hell yeah! And I get in, and, and I, I had already told him at this point. I had a you know fear of the Ouija board aspect of it, and obviously he was making super amounts of fun. But at that point, I was like, "What in the fuck <laughs> is going on here? That shit can." You know, you know, my birthday apparently that day was death. You know, <laughs> I didn't know what that meant, so I was like, I, I don't understand this. Let's just keep going with it. Fuck yeah, man! I'm just saying, man. Maybe that's a way to get some sort of point. Well, you I'll know? tell you what. However, you can tap in, whether it's the aliens, the occult, parallel universes, whatever the fuck it is, do it. <laughs> get out there and do it. But whatever you do, don't trust good the government. Taste, though, That's right. Good well, taste, a good taste, you know, you know maybe. You don't know, slit but. your wrists and be like, this exactly. is going to work. That's man. right. Yeah, don't do that. No, 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 no. No, I don't think. Uh, I think we're, you know, in modern day occult, I think we're beyond the use of blood. There's all kinds of synthetic alternates, you know, yeah, that you can you use. Go. I mean, shit. They got synthetic go pee. blood thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't, go get some synthetic blood. Do it that way. But uh, this has been UFO No. As always, don't trust the government. Be aware of the aliens. Keep an eye on the sky. Believe what you want to believe. But hit us up. Be on my show. If you got something to say about aliens, be on my show. Let's do this. Let's talk about it, huh? Yeah. Casey, thanks for being with me, man. Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, dude. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.